Today, we have a 1991 Jeep Cherokee XJ, and it's a manual, it's five speed, it has the AX15, which is good, but the bad thing is that it's 91, it has an internal slave cylinder, so the actual slave that, that actuates the clutch is, is inside the bell housing of the transmission, rather than being on the outside, and that's a pain in the butt. And um, a lot of people have issues with them. I'm having issues with mine. I can see clutch fluid bleeding out of it. So it's, it's bleeding down over time. And the pedal is pretty soft and spongy. The release is actually close to the floor and it's kind of starting to grind the synchros when I'm going into second gear. So I just picked this up. I am gonna sw swap it out to an external slave. So I went to the junkyard and I got all the pieces I need. We'll come over here and I'll show you the pieces talk a little bit more about this in more detail later on but from a junkyard I was lucky enough um, when I go to pick and pulls they don't tell you online what eh, that's not important all I all, all we have here is you're pretty much looking for I don't know the exact years but like 95 96 would have external slave I pulled this off of an 87 someone had already done the swap and it ended up in the junkyard so I got the parts that I need you need the bearing retainer this is the external one. I'll show you the internal side by side later on. And you need the actual bell housing off of an external uh, slave transmission. You're gonna need the clutch fork, throw out bearing. You can get a new one. I will get a new one. I'm not gonna put this one from the junkyard in, even though it looks like it's in good shape. You need the throw out bearing. And there is one other thing on the inside of this bell housing that you need to make sure you get with it. It is this little, this ball, that plastic ball right there. It should still be attached to your bell housing. Um, it's basically bolted on the other side of this. It's what pivots uh, on the other side of the clutch fork. So those are the pieces you need. Um, and of course, you're gonna have to get a new external slave. Um, well, you're gonna need the uh, master cylinder and slave cylinder. That's a one pre-filled unit. You can get it from an auto parts store. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I'll get all that later. While I'm in there, I'm gonna replace the clutch because it makes sense, and I'm going to replace the pilot bearing as well in the back of the engine block. So, this will apply. Um, really, if you're taking a transmission or you're switching a clutch or anything, it's gonna be the same steps. You'll have one extra step since it's a manual rather than it being an automatic. If it's automatic, you don't need to do anything inside the Jeep. If it's manual, you're gonna to need to take off the, the shifter. So that's what I'm gonna do first before I get at the drive shafts. But basically underneath that boot, you're gonna have, I think four bolts most likely. Uh, I haven't done this in a while, but you'll have four bolts that hold the actual shifter on. So I'm gonna remove the, the plastic um, little housing and I'm gonna take the boot off and then I'll zip out those four bolts, pull that shifter off and then everything else will be underneath the Jeep. So after we get that done, then the first step is gonna be the drive shafts. You gotta take off front and rear drive shafts. So that's what we're gonna go and do right now. So we're taking the drive shafts off. Um, and this is probably pretty common. First time I've run into it. But the drive shaft on the rear, the front end, the rear side of the front drive shaft, these bolts are pretty much all stripped out. And it's not very easy to get to. Uh, they're eight millimeter, but if you take uh, you know any sort of an open wrench, it doesn't really get on there very well. Anywhere where you can have some sort of torque, it doesn't slide on far enough, and it's pretty stripped out here. So I'm not able to get those out. I am going to keep moving, and then I'll get to the part where I drop the cross member off, and that'll give me direct access to it. And I'll try to get uh, a little ratchet all the way on there. See if I can get that just to get them out and then replace them with new ones that aren't stripped. So underneath we have the rear drive shaft out, the linkage for the transfer case is disconnected. We've got all the electrical un unplugged. The slave, it's an internal. I couldn't really figure out how to take it off from down there. So I didn't really care too much about it. I am probably just going to disconnect this guy up here because we're replacing this entire unit anyways. And then we will 
just shove it all down there when I go to take it out. Or I'll just cut the lines with some um, pliers or something. So I'm gonna replace that with a pre bled unit so I don't have to mess with it. Now, here's something that I do. You can use Ziploc bags, it doesn't really matter. I just have a ton of cardboard, so this is what I do. When I'm taking stuff apart, I draw templates if I need to for the bell housing. I draw the shape of it and then where each bolt came from. Um, if I've got something that can't, if it's just like a, a nut, not a bolt, zip tie it and then punch it through here. Cross member. Uh, these are the drive shaft. I just push them through, poke them through to the backside and they kind of stay in by themselves. They don't need to be really held in. And then I don't gotta mess with zip ties and then I just throw this away when I'm done with it. Um, so, I did not take, I didn't get the, um, the shifter out from up top yet. There's four bolts that hold it on. Two are pretty much underneath the firewall, so it's kind of a pain as usual. You can't reach it without taking off the whole dash and then probably removing this cover. I think what I'm just gonna do instead is once I've got the um, transmission lowered down, once I have the cross member out, which I'm about to take out right now, I'll lower the transmission down so I can get in there to get the top three or four bolts on top of the bell housing. All right, well now I'm getting uh, the transmission. I still have to do the bolts on the top of the bell housing, but I need to lower it down for that and I'm just getting ready. This shifter needs to come off. There's four bolts that hold it on, on the top of the transmission. There's one open hole right there. They are at 12 millimeter. Yeah, they're 12. The two, the top two, you can see the front two right there, easy enough to get to. I do need to lower the transmission because I can't get this one out because it's in the way of this. Um, transmission tunnel. Now the back two are back here. They're underneath this thing. Of course, big pain in the ass. Why wouldn't it be? Um, so before in the past, I've cut this out. You could do that if you want. I am just gonna lower the transmission down and then I'm gonna reach over the top from underneath, take a 12 millimeter uh, box end wrench and I'm just gonna take them off that way. But now this one's contacting and I can't get my uh, socket down there so I'm gonna lower the transmission a little bit and then I'll do the other ones all right this is what it looks like um, if you look down in there you can see into the transmission so I am going to put some tape I'm gonna clean that up and then I'm gonna tape that off with masking tape or duct tape so that nothing will fall into the transmission as we're messing around with it but now this is out all right, so the transmission's out. It's the AX15, I taped off the top. I don't know if I saw that or talked about that on another video, but I taped off the top so that it wouldn't get any junk or crap in it. I may replace the fluid, I may not. I haven't drained anything yet. The tranny and the transfer case are both still full. Um, so this is the main culprit here. This is what we're getting rid of, this internal slave situation. Um, and we're gonna replace it with an external slave. I have new bell housing, need the new bearing retainer, and I'll get these, I'll get better lighting on all this on a different day with some daylight when I actually show them all side by side. And we'll switch everything out. I am going to replace the clutch while I'm in here, but you don't need to come up here for that, that's fine. I'm gonna get rid of that bearing, pilot bearing too, I'll replace that, the clutch, the pressure plate all this stuff. I'll probably leave the flywheel unless it looks too damaged, but for now, here's where I'm gonna stop and we'll get rid of all this. Swap it over, put it back in.